everyone, thank you for being so patient. I've been very sick and have lost my voice, but it's back just a bit, so I thought I would sputter and spew and wheeze my way through this video entry. I always wish that I could capture the behind the scenes of the podcast. Conversation always continues once the mics are off, and we usually even get out on the water to do some fishing. A lot of the time on the show, we talk about techniques that can be hard to understand and comprehend while just listening. A lot of people, myself included, do best with a visual aid. So for this video entry, I decided to team up with a past guest of Anchored to do exactly that. This is my friend Justin. Good morning! You might remember Justin from episode 82 when we discussed fishing in Sydney Harbour and tips for fishing out of a boat. He was the bird lover, Sydney fly fishing guide, and badass drummer. Justin and I ended up going down a long trail of tips and techniques that could use a little visual aid. The top of the fly line, the head of the fly line is on the bottom. I run the line over that cast, come back, shoot into that cast. So we agreed to meet up again. We packed some rods and headed down to the water to see if we could add some visuals for listeners. So this tip is about preparing your line to fish, basically, getting it ready on the front of the boat. So when I pull my line off the reel and I lay it on the, on the ground, it's actually going to be the wrong way around. We're going to have the top of the line on the bottom and the bottom of the line on the top. So what I'm going to do is get myself a comfortable amount of line out onto the deck of the boat and I'm going to feed it into the water like I've just done here. You see it's all twisted because it was all the wrong way around. So we've got to get this prepped. This line will need to be stretched and I'll get the line into the water and now I'm going to strip it down onto the ground. And now that line's ready so instead of being the wrong way around it's ready to go. So it's really common for people to just strip the fly line straight down on top of their feet. And it means if you shift your feet, even a fraction, you're likely to step forward. A lot of people step forward when they cast, so they step on their line. What's better, I think, is to certainly practice stripping out to the side, out here, this this way, off to the side. If you need to strip out to the right-hand side, you can place the rod under your arm and you can strip out this way. You can also strip forward. Why would you ever strip it forward? What would be a situation where you need to? Maybe the wind's blowing towards me a fraction. So even if I'm going off to the side, maybe it's blowing in this way. I need to strip that side. There might be bushes here if I'm trout fishing or something like that, or I'm fishing uh, a river up north, something like that. There can be many reasons why you need to strip line all around the clock face, strip forward, Strip to the right, strip behind you to the right. I can even use this retrieve to strip off to the left if I need to. Sometimes you'll be in a boat, it might be a boat that's not set up for fly fishing and you're you're casting and you've got a cleat. There might be stored items there you want to get around. So it's very handy to be able to strip all sides of the deck all the way around. So Justin, in the podcast, you mentioned a uh, roly poly. Yes. And a lot of people don't know what that is. Can you explain? Uh, it, that name, I think, comes from, uh, from uh, the English name for this rolling your hands one over the other to do a, do a double-handed retrieve. Just call it a double-handed retrieve. This is the roly-poly here. It's used uh, a lot in English lock fishing and so on to, uh, to catch trout, but it's since become very big in saltwater as a much faster version as well to really get high speed for fish like tuna. Oh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of high speed fish love this, this really fast retrieve where you're really, really ripping the fly in fast. It's also fantastic if you're someone who tends to trout strike. You know, you've, you've just spent, uh, spent a few weeks in New Zealand catching trout and you hop out on the salt water and you know you're gonna trout strike, stick the rod under your arm and then retrieve this way. You'll never lift the rod on the strike. When you do get the hit, turn sideways to put a bend in the rod. Like once you've got the fish on, just to put the bend in the rod, then grab the rod, start fighting the fish. You'll notice I've got the rod under my left arm. That's because I fight fish with my right hand when I start. So it's much easier for me to grab the rod out of my left arm than if I have it under my right arm where I have to double shuffle the rod. The other benefit of maintaining control of the fly line with your line hand through the whole cast is that 
during the cast, it's very common for line to wrap around the handle or the reel if you let the line go. Show me what that would look like. Oh, we'll see if it'll happen. It happens about one in five times. <laughs> yep, there you go. Look, it wrapped around my finger. <laughs> That's because I didn't maintain line hand control. So very important as that line's shooting out, maintain control, then place the line over your fingers and stop the fly just before it hits and you'll get a nice presentation there. Now the line's dead tight. If a fish eats that, I'm on. That little bit I do at the end where I, as soon as I've stopped that line, I just give it a little retrieve. It just pulls all the line tight stops any slack from being there. I'm not trying to move the fly with that little pull there. I'm stopping the line and just pulling out the slack. It helps kick the leader over and it means your line's dead tight when that fly lands. So if you want a tight presentation with the fly, that's the way you do it. Stop the line with your fingers and just pull back a little bit just to straighten that line out once it's on the water. One of the classics, having the rod tip above the water. Oh my God, yeah. Every, every centimetre of, uh, of distance between the rod tip and the water is generally slack. Mm -hmm. So if you have the rod tip up in the air, you watch, you can actually see on a fast strip, you see the fly line kick left, right, left, right. You get this kinking slack in the line because the rod tip's above the water. That slack has to be pulled out before the fish is hooked. The other thing is that slack has to be pulled out before the fly moves. Bury the rod tip in the water. They don't melt. I promise I don't know any <laughs> brand of rod that melts when you stick it in the damn water. <laughs> okay. Um, I also, a nice little habit I get into with certain species is to, um, I strip over my front two fingers, uh, thumb on top. If you're stripping fast with your thumb not on top of the rod, the rod will bounce. That's the other thing about burying the tip in the water. The tip will stop. If it's in the water, the rod won't bounce as much. One thing that frustrates me is, is the rod in the gut. You know, putting the rod right in against the gut and trying to do a fast strip. Push your hand out as far as it'll go. Extend your arm as far as good. Now you've just gained nearly two and a half feet or however long your arms are. And now you've just gained extra strip. The fly cannot stay in the air. You've got to get it to the fish quickly. It's a really common thing that people spend far too much time casting, false casting, okay? The reason people false cast too much is generally because they don't create enough line speed. So we know that hauling is going to create line speed. But one of the most common things is they don't move the rod hand fast enough. If you move a rod hand at 60 kilometres an hour and hit a stop, then the fly line's going to move at 60 k's an hour, give or take friction. If you move the rod at 500 kilometres an hour, you're going to get a, a lot faster presentation, but also you create mass, which means you can slip more line on your forward or back cast. One of the most common things I see is too slow a rod hand and not feeding line on the back and forward cast. Mm. We're just trying to get enough line out to get the job done. In most cases, it's to get the head of the fly line out. If it takes you three or four goes, like back cast, to do that, it's just – it's a frustratingly slow game. Oh, and Be the fish go back The down. fish are gone. They're too fast. It's not a trout sitting there in one spot coming up and down. <laughs> it's, it, these fish move like so fast. And I see a lot of windows of opportunity lost. If you can create enough line speed with your rod hand, you can shoot a hell of a lot of line on your first pickup. So when that angler approaches the fish, shoot into that cast, come forward, shoot into that cast, come back, shoot into that cast, and then come forward at the most. So if I was to give one piece of casting advice, you're not throwing the fly. What you are doing is you are shaping a loop from the tip of the rod and that loop is carrying that fly to the target. So when I see a fish and I want to get the fly to that fish, I think of the rod tip and the path that's taking, and I fire that loop off the tip in the direction I want it to go, and I think of it like an arrow off the tip of the rod, and I'm unrolling that arrow. Think of it like an arrow on a piece of string if you like, but I'm aiming that loop and that arrow to where I want it to unfurl. So there you go. I hope that you learned something, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. All right, so stripping down. Is that a bait pole? That's uh, someone's outflow of the boat. Oh, that's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> so you, you, you've just... <laughs> that wind is a bitch. A hairy mole. Feel free to put your shoes back on. <laughs> Smell them from here. <laughs> Fuck you, Vokey. <laughs>